I thought that it would be an easier reload, looked fancier, and be quite honest with you, I've always thought these guns were just really, really cool. Hello everyone and welcome back to Ammo Mart. Some weeks ago, we shot a video talking about my initial foray into cowboy action shooting. First, I'd like to apologize for the delay. I know it's been some other videos in between that point and now, but as I'm about to explain, man, did I not know what I was getting into. This is a complicated topic a bit and also can be a very expensive one if you don't have a inroad with a friend who can kind of keep you from spending a lot of money unnecessarily. So what's happened since our original video was I'm trying to make a decision or was about one calibers I wanted to use and manufacturer of the pistols, shotgun, and rifle. Now, like anything in life, money's very important. And I learned very quickly that we're talking about money in the thousands of dollars, not hundreds. For instance, Pistol selection was where I started because it was what I'm the most comfortable with. I had originally thought that what I was going to use is some sort of high speed for the time, break top sort of pistol setup. And you keep in mind, you do need two of these for cowboy action shooting. I thought that it would be an easier reload, looked fancier, and be quite honest with you, I've always thought these guns were just really, really cool. Now, Reality, however, is they're cool, but they're very, very expensive. And the very, very little time that I've spent actually trying to work the gun while it was empty, not my bag at all. So first thing, I'm very glad I didn't just purchase one of those pistols to compete with because I wouldn't have been very good at it in my opinion ever. But more on that in next week's video when we're on the range actually shooting some of this equipment. Next logical step then is to go to perhaps something like this replica of a Colt single action army. This one's done by Cimarron, chambered in 4440. Now, the history buff side of my brain was almost hell bent on using 4440. Well, that's an expensive way to go. You can get proper bullets to shoot in the cowboy action load from Fiocchi, but, I want to work the gun pretty aggressively because despite how beautiful they are in appearance, they're going to be tools to me when I get into this because I'm going to work them extremely hard. So back to money, that's a factor. 4440 is a lot more expensive than say 38 Special if you buy weapons chambered for 357 Magnum. So to me, history went out the window or its authenticity because I'm going to shoot the gun a lot and not being independently wealthy, that ruled the 4440 out for me. So, what I hit upon was this guy from Ruger, the new Vaquero. These are nothing new to people already familiar with the single action shooting sports, and this one you can tell is a Bisley frame. One of these pistols is in 45 long, the other one in 357 Magnum. So next week, we're going to make some decisions about which caliber fits better for me or I shoot better. But back to economics, I have a feeling that it's going to be 357 38. Now, specific to me and the way I perceive that I want to run the gun, this frame is much, much more shootable for me. I like the flattened hammer. I like the change of the grip angle and design, and I find these guns as I've been trying them out to be very, very comfortable, and they have a very natural point for me. I prefer this over the stock 1873 frame. So, one more word about the pistols. We briefly talked earlier about how you need two. So, these guns are used, and this is an important thing to pay attention to because due to the cost of these guns new, I wouldn't recommend that somebody just getting into cowboy action shooting buy new ones. MSRP this morning on Ruger's website was $2,099 for the pair. That is not an inconsequential purchase to most people and an awful expensive way to begin a new hobby. So. 
flip the script to used, your cost is down to around 750 to 800, of course, depending on where you buy the gun. If you don't have access to a gun store that has a reliable and sort of uh, used inventory coming into the door all the time, look around on the web. There are some nice deals on the websites and once you kind of figure out how to actually purchase a gun online, it's not that big of a deal and you can save a ton of money. These guns, believe it or not, try not to laugh, are actually used even though they look like they did the day they were born. This is very common with this sort of setup. People, one, buy them for their historical sort of significance if they have any, meaning they like the look of the old school thing because they're being modern made, they're not collectible. But interestingly enough, what I've noticed from my time in gun sales, these guns are rarely, rarely worked because it's inherently inconvenient to load a lot of rounds and fire a lot of rounds through a single action pistol as compared to a 20 round magazine you can go through pretty quick. So my own personal feeling is that it's an extremely safe buy used because as you can tell, they don't get worked very hard in most cases. I'm sure it's going to be a Ruger Bisley frame Vaquero. And one of the other interesting aspects about this is with a little bit of a modification from an internal screw, I won't tell you how to do it. If you research this, most people already know this. You can actually get the cylinder to spin freely both ways. That's a significant upgrade compared to a lot of models because if you have to reload the gun, say on a missed shot or for any other reason, it just makes it much faster. So this would be another reason why the Vaquero is a good way to go. Now, I haven't done this at all in competition. In fact, even in practice, I have never fired a single action shooting sports sort of string of fire or stage of fire. Never done it. So I'm certainly not an expert. But I can tell you what I've been gathering as I'm trying to make my decisions about the most economical and efficient way to do this is there are some manufacturers that have a reputation at least as not being as reliable long term as the Ruger. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But if you do your own research, I'll bet you you'll find the same thing, is that the u Birdies, which used to be an economical choice but really isn't anymore, they've caught right up in price to everyone else doing replica cowboy guns. Oh, you don't want that because they're not reliable. Taylor and company, on and on. But back to some personal information that I actually witnessed, not something I found on the web. Years ago, I was acquainted with a young man, he was in high school, who was already talented enough in cowboy action shooting that he was sponsored. And I found it interesting when he would come into the store and he actually told me that he had four or five guns sponsored by the company, I won't say which one, because two or three of them were always in the shop. Now, that guy is actually shooting a lot more than probably I will, but I was actually told that by one of us, their sponsored shooters, and let me just, Leave it at this, it was one of the Italian companies. So let's move on to the shotgun real quick. There are lever action shotguns, pump shotguns, brake shotguns, all of those kinds of things are usable in cowboy action shooting. Now, one of the real popular ones is this Winchester Model 1897, 12 gauge. This is not modified in any way because I borrowed this from a buddy of mine and this was his grandfather's shotgun, so obviously he doesn't want to shorten the barrel or do anything like that. But all of these guns are subject to modification and improvement. Some people call it slicked up, whatever you want to call it. And depending on how far you want to go into that slick up process, they can be just about as expensive as buying the firearm originally. So my advice, and I've done a little bit of homework on this, talking to very experienced people, meaning experience in the cowboy action game, is until you're around a while, don't slick the firearms up at all. Leave it factory, see if you like the sport, and down the road, maybe make some modifications to your firearm. But it's really not something that you want to do out the gate, because let's be honest, most people when they start are not going to be regionally good competitors anyway. And there is a little bit of a safety factor involved in having an extremely slicked up set of pistols, shotgun, or rifle. So 
The 1897 will be my choice. I can tell you I've already made that decision based on the cost. You can get it for around five to $600 depending on the condition. And most of them are very, very reliable tools yet. So for me, I can tell you right away, it will be the Winchester model 1897. And oddly enough, most people shoot these single shot. You can see when you work the, work the action on the shotgun, that you're not allowed to obviously have more than one round in the magazine tube. So basically what happens is they load, fire, work the action, and load the second round, which would complete the stage. Instead of your break open, feed two shotgun shells down into your break open type of weapons, sometimes called coach guns. Coach guns are expensive. And to me, by the time I have to polish the chamber, bevel the chamber for ease of getting the shotgun shell in there. Seems like a complicated way to go around the barn for 600 bucks, which will solve your problem for you. Now to each his own, I might change my mind. As I said, I'm completely inexperienced in this game. So I might decide, hey, coach guns are the way to go. And if that's true, then I still got a cool Winchester 1897. So I'm still happy. Now, the rifle is this one here, borrowed from a friend of mine is of course a Winchester model 1873 chambered in 357 Magnum. This functioning piece of art has been modified some. You'll notice that there is a short stroke lever action kit installed on the rifle, which means it doesn't have to travel as far, of course, to advance the new round into the chamber and cock the hammer. It's also got a modified rear sight. The buckhorns have been removed. And if I can get this on camera, it has a very, very large and easy to see brass bead front sight. It's all designed for quick pickup of the target. You're not shooting terribly far in lever action, or I'm sorry, in cowboy action shooting. Basically what you wanna hear is fire and as the steel going gone. Distances are quite close, so speed is everything. And I've learned this much, transitions, are hugely important based on how quickly you not only move from one position to the other on the range, but you can transition from shotgun, pistol to rifle and back and forth. So the only thing I have really come to the determination of one is I'm very blessed in that I'm going to borrow some of this equipment for the next video, finish making my decisions based on how that experience goes, obviously, but for the shotgun. So you'll notice one of the other tools we have here on the table this would not be something that you would be using for cowboy action shooting, but this guy is cool. It's from Petersoli. It's called a Howda. It's a 20 gauge black powder shotgun. And I'm going to dress up like a pirate and shoot this guy. This thing looks awesome. I have no idea what's going to happen when we do, but man, am I itching to try it. So we'll use this guy when we do the actual cowboy action tutorial. So a bit on that, uh, the person that I've gotten uh, set up with as a mentor in this game is a guy named Scott Rose. I've known him for years. He's an extremely talented shooter, a wealth of knowledge about guns from clear through the beginning to modern times. And he's going to be kind of my tutor and sort of technical advisor as we go through this. And so will a very, very talented young gunsmith named Josh Carpenter. We'll work with him next week on our range at Ghost Town. So the journey continues. I haven't forgot about it, but there are a lot of decisions to make about budget, style, and authenticity when you get into this thing. So I've been taking my time trying to figure out what's the best way to go, and hopefully I can share some of those tips with you guys along the way. Hope you enjoyed this week's video. Stay tuned for next week. We're going to get outside and do some shooting.